I'm excited to share a new move Versa is making to be more flexible and inclusive and help the fitness industry succeed into the future. Also, after only three months, we've hit a major milestone with the GYMS Act. And also, I have a few other updates you should know about. So thanks for joining me for another Ursa Take 5, sponsored by Precore. As we all know, our industry continues to adapt and change for the future, including an emphasis on personalization and targeted offerings for specific customer segments. This is yet another reason why Ursa now offers more options for health clubs, gyms, studios, fitness facilities, and fitness professionals through a new flexible tiered membership program. The first level, the basic membership, is ideal for companies that want to engage with businesses' best practices, resources, and experts. It'll also give operators access to management tools that they can use to grow their business. The mid-level, or the standard membership, is the equivalent of our existing club offering. This membership is designed for operators who want to grow their business using data-driven research, diverse insights, and effective tactics to curate stronger industry relationships. The top membership level that we're calling the premium membership includes executive insights, priority service, exclusive networking, and greater brand recognition. The members at this level have the opportunity to participate in increased engagement with URSA, as well as the National Health and Fitness Alliance and the broader global fitness industry. URSA membership dues will also go towards supporting other initiatives. For example, a significant portion of the U.S. membership dues will go toward public affairs and the National Health and Fitness Alliance efforts, while international members will contribute to the Global Health and Fitness Alliance. URSA is also pledging to donate 1% of its total annual revenues to the URSA Foundation, which helps promote health through exercise on a global scale from people of all walks of life. You can visit ursa.org to see a complete description of membership options and all the associated benefits. We spent the last year working tirelessly to show Congress that the health and fitness industry is in desperate need of financial relief. And those efforts are starting to pay off. The GEMS Act has reached an impressive milestone of 103 co-sponsors. Fitness industry professionals and gym goers alike have sent over 27,000 messages to Congress so far. And while our efforts are definitely paying off, we can't let up. So please keep contacting your local representatives to bring attention to the critical role the health and fitness industry plays in our overall public health and help ensure that our businesses, your businesses, are no longer overlooked. The fitness industry has always highlighted the importance of well-being and exists specifically to provide a safe space for individuals from all segments of society to be active and also to enjoy the benefits associated with leading a healthy lifestyle. Our industry needs financial relief to continue providing the nation with these vital services. Indeed, I believe beyond essential, but vital. So if you haven't already participated in our letter campaign, please do so, and if you have, Share the gymzac.com with your networks and help us spread the message even more. The CDC has officially updated their guidelines saying it's safe for vaccinated Americans to go maskless outdoors. I thought, wow, what a groundbreaking revelation. Thanks a lot, CDC. But seriously, even though many people were already doing this, for others, the CDC's announcement is a landmark opportunity that they've been waiting to see. However, some people, like Dr. Scott Gottlieb, believe the CDC is moving too slowly when it comes to updating their COVID guidelines as vaccines become more widely available and infection levels drop off. In fact, in a recent op-ed published in the Wall Street Journal, Dr. Gottlieb said public health officials really should be willing to relax some of these restrictions, especially as people receive the vaccine and their risk of infection becomes less and less. This could be another great sign for the fitness industry because easing restrictions, even for outdoor activities, allows people to go out and get their physical activity. McKinsey and company shared exclusive research with the Global Health and Fitness Alliance recently. And the research showed that physical activity gap between different income levels and the opportunity to make healthy lifestyles accessible to all is something that we need to look further into. 
it showed physical activity or inactivity, I should say, is tied to lower income groups at an increasing rate, while higher income groups are trending in the opposite direction. It also shows the pandemic and lockdown restrictions reduce physical activity levels amongst the youth, in part due to schools closing and children no longer having access to sports. Hours spent playing sports decreased an amazing 50% for children ages 6 to 18, and sadly, 64% of parents say that they're still concerned about their child getting sick if they do return to playing sports. And of course, research continues to show that increasing physical activity provides significant mental and physical benefits, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic for people of all ages. We also learned how the digital fitness world accelerated due to COVID. Over 71,000 new fitness and health apps were launched last year alone, with the most successful apps offering some sort of community element, which has always been a fundamental part of the club environment. In fact, consumers spent 45% more time on fitness apps in 2020 than they did in 2019. So we should really look at this as a positive sign that people want to get more active because it shows health. It really is a top priority in people's minds as they're coming out of the pandemic. Well, that's all for this week's Take 5. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you next week.